Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the DBMCI channel. So I'm myself, Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I'm the general medicine educator and a cardiologist. So in this session, I'll be discussing a clinical ECG. So from now onwards, every day, I'll be posting one particular session on the clinical ECGs because the ECGs, they play a very important role in your day-to-day -day practice. So as a part of the discussion, right. So before starting the session, let me just give you uh, important information that on 29th of January, I'll be discussing the entire ECG that is starting all the way from basics and to the advanced level of the ECG. And this particular session will be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on 29th of January on the DBMCI channel. So for getting subscribed to this particular session, you can just click on the link which is given in the description. Having said this, let me just teach you the clinical ECG of the day. So this is a clinical presentation of a 14 year old female. So 14 year old female, she presented with an episode of palpitations and associated dizziness. What is the diagnosis of the ECG? So ECG has been done and this is the ECG. So what is the diagnosis? The options are paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, WPW syndrome. Now, so what is the clinical presentation? The clinical presentation of the patient is palpitations and as well as the dizziness. Now palpitations and dizziness can be seen in all these clinical scenarios. PSVT, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, they can have palpitations and dizziness. Atrial fibrillation, even those patients, they can have palpitations. Iotic stenosis, yes. Secondary to hypotension or iotic stenosis causing ventricular hypertrophy, there can be arrhythmias causing palpitations. WPW syndrome, which is nothing but Wolf Parkinson's white syndrome, which is a pre-excitation syndrome. Even these patients, they present with palpitations and dizziness. Now, you have to make out what is the diagnosis among these four options. See, in the ECG which has been given to you, you need to know what are the abnormalities. The abnormalities within the ECG are, number one, you have a short PR interval. So I have just marked that with an arrow mark. And the normal PR interval is 120 to 200 milliseconds. And here the PR interval is less than 120 milliseconds. And another important abnormality, you can observe that there is presence of a wide QRS complex. Normal QRS complex, it is 70 to 100 milliseconds. And here, if you observe the QRS complex, it is more than 100 milliseconds, which is suggestive of wide QRS complex. And if you take this QRS complex, you know, you have slurring of the R wave, right? You have a slurring of this particular R wave. And that slurring of the R wave is nothing but your delta wave. So these are the three important abnormalities what you have in this particular ECG. Now, these three abnormalities, where do you come across? You will come across that in patients with a WPW syndrome, that is Wolf Parkinson's white syndrome. And at the same time, you should be able to make out how to rule out the other options as well. Let me teach you even that. Like you take PSVT, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Let me tell you, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, it is a narrow complex tachycardia. Right? If you can observe the QRS complexes here, they are narrow complexes. The, the duration is like less than 70 milliseconds and they have tachycardia. So if you take the heart rate in this particular ECG, it is around 150 beats per minute. And another important point is that you have the presence of a pseudo R wave in case of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. And what is the initial treatment of choice in patients with PSVT? That is induction of the vagal maneuver. That is the carotid sinus massage will be the first line treatment. And again, before doing the carotid sinus massage, you have to auscultate for the presence of any brui. If there is any brui over the carotid artery, you should not do carotid sinus massage. And what will be the first line drug of choice in PSVT? That is adenosine 6 milligrams IV bolus you have to give. That is about the PSVT how to identify. And you take the other uh, option that is atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, the very, very important point is the irregularly irregular rhythm, right? So you can observe that there is variable RR interval. So I have given you the a yellow color R arrow marks, which are showing you the variable RR interval. So variable RR interval, absent P wave, the presence of the fibrillatory waves. These are the ECG changes in case of the atrial fibrillation. Then 
The other option was aortic stenosis. First of all, you need to know in a 14 year old female, can there be aortic stenosis? Yes, even in a 14 year old female, there can be aortic stenosis. But what is the cause of aortic stenosis in a 14 year old female? That is due to bicuspid aortic valve. So due to bicuspid aortic valve, there can be development of aortic stenosis. And in patients with aortic stenosis, they develop left ventricular hypertrophy. So ECG changes in aortic stenosis will be the features suggestive of left ventricular hypertrophy. There is concentric hypertrophy. And how to make out the concentric left ventricular hypertrophy or hypertrophy of the left ventricle in the ECG? We have a criteria called sokolov leon criteria. And according to that particular criteria, if you take the amplitude of the S wave in V1 and amplitude of the R wave in V6, it should be more than 35 mm. That is what is suggestive of left ventricular hypertrophy. So this will be the ECG changes in case of the aortic stenosis. So going back to the question, right. So in this question, if you observe, you are having short PR interval, wide QRS complex, and as well as the presence of delta wave. So all those are suggestive of the Wolf Parkinson's white syndrome. And to say a few points about Wolf Parkinson's white syndrome, it is a pre-excitation syndrome. You have an accessory bundle. Apart from you take SA node and AV node, both of them are connected by internodal fibers. That is anterior, middle and posterior internodal fibers. And apart from that, you can see an orange color arrow mark here. So this is an accessory bundle which is connecting the SA node and as well as the ventricle. So through this accessory bundle, you know, the impulse enters into the ventricle before the normal time. So thereby you will have a short PR interval and the ventricle is getting depolarized through that accessory bundle which has slow conduction of velocity and that is the reason why you have the presence of wide QRS complex. So in patients with WPW syndrome, it is mainly the presence of bundle of Kent, which is an accessory bundle, which will give rise to these abnormal ECG changes. And in case of WPW syndrome, what will be the treatment of choice? The treatment of choice will be the radio frequency ablation. Medical management, we have, sub, we have different drugs. I will discuss that in my session on 29th of January. But treatment of choice in case of WPW syndrome is the radio frequency ablation. So this is the clinical ECG of today. So once again, let me just tell you on 29th of January, I will be discussing the entire ECG from the basics to the advanced level and concept behind that particular abnormalities on 29th of January on the DBMCA live. So thank you and see you tomorrow again with the clinical ECG part two.